lesson I showed how a change in the price can cause a change in the quantity demanded and how we could determine exactly what quantity would be demanded at any price between our P intercept and our Q intercept using the linear demand equation that we have here. In this lesson what I want to focus on is factors that can actually cause a shift in a demand curve not just a movement along the demand curve. So we're going to hearken back to an earlier lesson in this series on demand in which we introduced the non-price determinants of demand. You'll recall that the non-price determinants of demand determinants of demand were those factors other than the price of the good itself that can cause a shift in the demand curve for a good. And the acronym that I taught you to help you remember those non-price determinants of demand was TOAS. I'm not going to go through what all these letters stand for again today, but I will remind you quickly. Tastes and preferences of consumers, the price of other related goods, that's the O, the expectations of future prices, that's the E, the I is the incomes of consumers, S was the size of the market, the number of consumers, and the other S was special circumstances. So what we're going to talk about now is how a change, a change in any of these will cause a change in either the A variable or the B variable in the demand equation. For instance, let's go through one or two examples here. Let's assume that something causes the demand for candy to increase relating to the price of other related goods. For example, what if the price of ice cream, ice cream prices, decreases? How are ice cream and candy related? Well, these are both delicious treats that children could consume instead of one another. If the price of ice cream decreases, how is that going to affect the equation for demand for candy? What is the relationship between ice cream and candy? We could say that they are substitute goods. Therefore, if ice cream gets cheaper, the demand for candy could decrease. Why is that? Because the cheaper substitute will now be more attractive to consumers and therefore the demand for the good in question will fall. How does this affect the equation? Well, let's look at our graph because what we need to do is show how it will affect the curve, the demand curve itself, and then we'll examine and explain how this relates to the equation. As the price of ice cream falls, we would expect the demand for candy to decrease. In other words, shift to the left. Let's draw a new demand curve to the left of the original demand curve, not changing the slope itself, but rather just the location of the curve on a graph. In other words, I want to have the same negative slope, but what I've changed is where the demand curve starts along my horizontal axis. In other words, I've decreased the quantity intercept of demand. So we could say the Q intercept fell or decreased from, we know what it was before, it was 600 because that was our A variable. So it fell from 600 to 400. How does this affect our demand equation? Well, when the A variable decreases, we get a new demand equation of QD equals 400 in this case, minus 200 P. What have we done? A decrease in demand for candy caused a decrease in the A variable in our equation the quantity intercept of demand decreased from its original level of 600 to its new level of 400. This is one way we can illustrate and explain how a change in demand will affect the demand equation. The A variable or the quantity demanded at a price of zero would decrease if demand decreased and increase if demand increased. For example, what if ice cream prices had increased? As a substitute for candy and increase in ice cream prices, would cause a shift out, so I'm going to show here, in the demand curve for candy. And with this increase in demand, we would see the Q intercept of the demand curve increase as well. Now we are off our chart here, but the way I've drawn this, we would know 
that this would be a new Q intercept of 800. So anything that increases the demand for a good would cause the A variable to increase. That's one way we can show how a change in the demand for a good would affect the demand equation. A decrease in demand would cause the A variable to decrease. We can say an increase in demand would cause the A variable to increase. Now we've walked through one set of scenarios that could cause an increase or a decrease in the demand for a good and explained how that could affect the quantity intercept of demand. But what we did not do yet was show what could change the slope of the demand curve. What we want to look at in the next and final video in our linear demand equation series is a factor that could cause a change not in the A variable, but in the B variable, which is the inverse of the slope. Here we go.